Hey there, folks. Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Stagecoach Mary. Let's talk about her. Mary Fields was born into slavery in Hickman County, Tennessee in 1832. Birth records for slaves weren't kept, so we don't know her exact birthday. What we do know is that she reached adulthood at six feet tall, weighing 200 pounds, and tough as boot leather. After the Civil War, many freed slaves moved north. Mary made her way up there working on river boats as a servant. She settled in a convent in Ohio where she worked as a groundskeeper. This is where we first experienced the character that helped put her in the history books. After her arrival, a nun asked her how the trip was and she said that she was ready for a good cigar and a drink. Mary was known to hang out in saloons and even get into a few fights now and again. You see, she was gruff and had a temper. God help anyone who walked on the lawn after Mary had cut it. In 1885, Mary went to another convent in Montana to nurse a nun and a friend back to health. Due to her behaviors of drinking, smoking, and almost getting into a shootout with a janitor, she was asked to leave. You have to live the life you were born to live. Well then, I guess I'll be a stagecoach robber. Climb every mountain. Oh, no, I'm not singing. <laughs> Wearing men's clothes and doing odd jobs in the Wild West suited Mary all right, until 1895 when she got contracted by the Postal Service as a star route carrier. Her job was to deliver mail by stagecoach and protect it from bandits and highwaymen. Mary was the second woman in America to have that honor and the first African-American woman. She could also hitch a team of horses faster than the other people who applied for the job. Now, I couldn't find a photo depicting Mary driving an actual stagecoach. In all the photos I see, more of a wagon. But Wagon Mary doesn't have the same ring to it. Stagecoach Mary, is it? Proper name's Mary Fields. Well. In her tenure, she drove that stage through the worst weather, over tough terrain, and got the mail to its destination. If the road conditions were so bad that the coach couldn't get through, she carried the mail on her back. Toting a rifle, a revolver, and a tough demeanor, outlaws usually didn't want to mess with Stagecoach Mary. I bet you a dollar I could knock you out in one punch. Women weren't allowed in saloons in Cascade, but Mayor D.W. Monroe gave her special permission. Maybe he was too afraid of getting slugged or shot to enforce it. One punch, one dollar. And what about the sprightly poodle who's fu- She was also fond of baseball and would frequently go to the games and award team members with bouquets from her garden. Those that didn't play well, she punched in the nose. No, sorry, that's not true. As tough as she was, Mary was generous and loved kids. When she retired in 1903, the Cascade community revered her and even closed the schools to celebrate her birthday. Stagecoach Mary died on December 5, 1914. So many folks attended her funeral, it was one of the largest the town had ever seen. Montana-born actor Gary Cooper remembered Mary from his youth and said that she lived to become one of the freest souls ever to draw a breath, or a 38. Well folks, that's it for the history of Stagecoach Mary, a fascinating pioneer woman. Thanks for watching, and as always, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on down the trail. Like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on down the trail. <laughs> Even the camera woman. <laughs>